now that we understand how many-to-many -many relationships work and how uh, relational tables in a database can be structured in order to um, store the data about those relationships, look, let's look at how we can configure our model classes in a Spring Boot application to uh, work with the ORM system, to work with Spring Data and Hibernate in order to properly map our classes into that relational structure using a join table. So again, just like the last lesson, the code in this lesson has already been completed and we're going to walk through and point out some of the more interesting and relevant pieces of the code. You'll be walked through the solution to this, uh, to this, this, this exercise or this lesson, the final code, in an upcoming uh, studio in class. So you'll actually go through this on your own. So we're not gonna be live coding here, but just rather looking at and, and observing the code that we're working with. So let's look at our new menu class. So our menu class is going to be, um, you know, represent a menu within our system. You can think of a menu as say, you know, if you're at a restaurant and they have different cheese samplers, you might have several cheeses, four or five cheeses within a sampler. And correspondingly, the same cheese might appear in several different menus. So that's how you want to think about the relationships between these classes. We already have the cheese class and we'll look at that in a second to see how we've updated it in order to work with the menu class. But let's look at the menu class first. So the menu class, like the rest of our Hibernate Managed classes, has a primary key field or a private int ID that has the ID and generated value annotations. We also have a name, which has the same restrictions as the name in some of the other classes we've worked with, so it can't be null. And the size must be between three and 15 characters. And then down below we have um, you know, a default constructor and getters and setters for most of these fields, along with an add item. So the add item is related to our list of cheeses. So we have a list of cheeses as a private field, and that can we can add you know one one cheese to that at a time. This has a new annotation to us. We've seen the one to many and the many to one annotation previously when looking at relating cheeses to categories. Here, unsurprisingly, we're going to have a many to many annotation. So that basically says that uh, this class menu is related to the cheese class by a many-to-many -many relationship and that this collection, this list of cheese objects, should be how part uh, one side of how that relationship is mapped. So for a given menu object, this particular collection will store the cheeses that are related to that particular object. In other words, the cheeses that are on that particular menu. And so let's look at how Hibernate will figure out which cheeses are in that menu, at least from the object side. So if we open up our cheese class, there is a new addition here, um, which is uh, right here, we have a private list of menus. And this has a many-to-many -many annotation as well. However, this has a mapped by attribute. And so we need to, we can't just put the many-to-many -many annotation on both sides here and expect it to work. Um, Hibernate needs a little bit more information in order to properly determine what goes where. And we can do this on either side. So, you know, when we were talking about one-to-many relationships, there was the sense of uh, one class basically owning the other, one class having, you know, holding all of the many instances of another class. And in a many-to-many -many relationship, there's usually, it's usually viewed as symmetric, right? So, um, you know, here, while a menu has several cheeses, a cheese can be in several menus, from the perspective of the data, um, you know, there's not really one class owning the other. So you can use this attribute on either side. And what this says is that Hibernate should determine the mapping for this particular list, this particular collection, by looking at the cheeses property on the menu class. Okay, so Hibernate will look for the cheeses property on the menu class, and that one is the inverse side. It's the, uh, the other many-to-many -many on the other side. And so that just that sort of link, that linking up of these two things is enough for Hibernate to figure out which cheeses go in which menus and which menus have which cheeses, et cetera. So um, let's go ahead and um, just start up our application. Let me start up MAMP first, and I'll show you how this results in a join table being created as we saw in the conceptual many-to-many -many relationships lesson. Okay, so let's go ahead now that MAMP is running. I'm going to start up my application. And just as a reminder, every time you start up a Spring Boot application that has um, Spring Data enabled, 
On startup, the application will scan your model classes and look for those that are supposed to be persistent, and it will do the work of trying to figure out which fields should be mapped to which columns and which databases, and trying to figure out these relationships. So if you've um, if you haven't set up your fields and your relationships properly, you're going to see startup exceptions. So that's a pretty common thing when you're getting this right, when you're first kind of working with these and trying to set up a relationship properly. You'll frequently um, have your, your application throw an exception during startup. We have to go to slash cheese here. Actually, no, we didn't. I'm in the wrong spot. We really wanted to look at the tables, didn't we? So let's go back to MAMP and PHP my admin. Um, okay, so here we are in the Cheese MVC database, which is the database I have configured for this particular application. And previously we just had a cheese and a category table. Now we have a menu table along with a menu cheeses table. So let's look at the menu table first. And we see that it only has an ID and a name. There's no additional foreign key columns or anything like that. Let's look at the cheese table. And we see that it only has the same columns as before, even though we've added menu properties or the, the menus property to, to uh, the cheese class. The information about the relationship between cheeses and menus is stored here in the menu cheeses join table. So notice that each of these, um, each of these columns has the foreign key little icon indicating that they're a foreign key into their respective tables. Menus ID is a foreign key into menu and cheese's ID is a foreign key into cheese's. And there's actually, I've already started this up and played with some data. So you can see here that there actually already are some, um, some entries into this table. And so if you were to say even, since these are foreign keys, phpMyAdmin is smart enough to know how to link to those. So you can say, which is, if you're looking at this data and you wondered what was the, the cheese's ID with seven, you could click on that and it will go and, and show you that piece of data. So, you know, we're not, we're not kind of showing you how to work with data within this uh, PHP MyAdmin interface, but you can, um, you can, you know, edit, delete, manipulate data here um, and do various things there. But uh, so that's our join table. And so this join table was created for us during application startup by Spring Boot, the first time actually that we, that we started the application after creating that new relationship within our model classes. Okay, so that's, uh, to summarize, that's how to set these, um, these classes up so that you have a many-to-many -many relationship. We have the many-to-many -many annotation on both sides. Each class has a list of um, the instances of the uh, other class that, that belong to it. And uh, one side of that relationship at least has to have this mapped by property, which tells Hibernate what property on the other class it should use to um, determine which objects are related to which. All right, so that's all we're gonna do in this video is we just wanted to explore just the basic setup of our annotations. In the next video, we'll actually look at how we can use um, our many-to-many -many relationships within the context of our controllers and our views.